Looking for a way to make your commute less dull or to brighten your mundane chores? Look no further. I'm Veronica Costello, daring you to lend us an ear as we plunge into another illuminating episode of Talk Commerce, where we pair industry guests with insightful questions and top it off with Brent's classic bad jokes, fresh from his notorious free joke project. This week, we're honored to have the chairman of Think Remote, Sharon Koifman, who is redefining the world of remote work with his innovation and dynamic ideas. Brace yourselves for a lively session where we'll delve into stories of distant job hunting, remote management, and even perhaps a hint of survival skills in the remote work environment. Intriguing, isn't it? Now don't get too comfortable. We must make sure to save some chuckles for Brent's latest joke. Will it be a strike or a gutter ball? Only time will tell, so prepare your judgment calls. But before we set off on this thrilling venture, we mustn't forget who makes this all possible. Yes, you guessed it. This podcast would be adrift without the generous support from our magnificent sponsors. Stay tuned. We will be right back after a word from them. Is your Magento site moving at a snail's pace? Believe it or not, you're in the same boat as 90% of Magento store owners. Let's add a splash of optimism. I recently had a client who revived their site by switching to Hoofa. Their excitement was contagious. Hoofa is more than just a theme. It's like having a secret weapon in your e-commerce arsenal. Picture this, you're crafting an online space that's as vibrant, engaging, and dynamic as your brand. Sounds exciting, doesn't it? That's the Hoofa magic. Performance, top notch. Usability, smooth as butter. With Hoofa, hitting Google Lighthouse scores of 100 isn't a dream, it's reality. My client and I have been on this exhilarating journey, and I tell you, it's a game changer. But hey, Hoofa isn't just about turbocharging your performance. It's about putting a personal stamp on your store. The theme is fully customizable. Play around, express yourself, make it truly yours. My client has been having a blast watching their online storefront transform supercharged by Hufa's powerful features and tools. Ready for transformation? Why not test drive Hufa and feel the difference yourself? Visit hyva.io. That's hyva.io. And when you get there, don't forget to mention that Talk Commerce sent you. Trust me, you're in for a treat. My name is Brent Peterson and I'm your host. Please remember to subscribe wherever you download your podcasts. And now, Talk Commerce. Welcome to this episode of Talk Commerce. Today I have Sharon Koifman. Sharon is the chairman of Think Remote. Sharon, go ahead, do an introduction for yourself much better than I did. Tell us your day-to-day role and maybe one of your passions in life. Okay, look, I am, um, like you said, I'm the chairman of Think Remote, which is uh, um, the biggest online publication for remote work and also remote management. But that is all funded originally from Distant Job, which is the first remote recruitment agency in the world where we specialize in finding amazing talent that um, from across the world, we headhunt them and entice them with a remote job. And those are full-time career-driven individuals where we also take care of the HR component and make sure that we know when they get burned out, when they need uh, a raise and anything of that sort, which means uh, we find pretty amazing uh, pretty amazing people. On top of it, I'm also a bestseller writer for a book called Surviving Remote Work. Even more awesome is the Audible. I found it, people tell me it's... It, extremely funny so i i actually the one who read it so if you like my voice right now and i'm not boring you to death this is uh the, the, this is what you're going to hear on on the audiobook and that's my story that's that's the small not so small introduction <laughs> that's awesome thank you um so you did very graciously volunteer to get told a joke i'm going to tell you a joke uh, oh boy for my free joke project and oh boy. um and uh, all you have to do is say, uh, should that joke remain free or do we think somebody should charge for it? Or in this case, can that joke be easily uh, um, as a remote joke, right? It doesn't have to come into the office. It's, it's good anywhere. Let's, let's, let's frame it that way. Hmm. Uh, 
anyways, so here we go. I had to fire the guy that I hired to mow my lawn. He just didn't cut it. Oh, this is one of those jokes. Uh, the, you, you know, my wife and my father-in-law love those jokes. I'm not going to. It's it's similar <laughs> to the knock-knock jokes. I'm not going to lie. It's not my, it's not my cup of tea. Uh, we can do better. We can Absolutely. definitely do better, Brent. Yes, we can always do better. I'm trying to stay within the time frame. So we have, and that was an employment joke. So I thought it was very appropriate. Um, <laughs> it, although but it did no, make me laugh. I, so, so I don't like those jokes yet. I laughed a little bit. It made me giggle. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Because, you know, I did hire a remote lawn trimmer, you know, the guy that was in, he was in, um, he was in South America and I hired him to mow my lawn because he was a remote worker. So it hasn't worked out so well. My lawn is still growing, uh, but <laughs> you know that's the idea. So, anyway, I, like I digress horribly. In the ever-evolving retail landscape, one platform is changing the game, ushering in a retail renaissance that puts relationships at the forefront. Welcome to Endear. Endear is a CRM built for omni-channel brands, empowering them with the consumer data to deliver a personalized, efficient customer experience that drives sales and retention. Imagine a tool that intuitively understands your customers' needs, giving your brand a remarkable edge. Don't believe us? Geronimo from Rebag says, I've used every CRM from Salesforce down, and Endear is the best one I've found for us. With Endear, your team isn't just selling products and crafting stories that resonate, nurturing connections that last. It's not just a CRM. It's a tool that empowers your sales associates to make personalized connections, bridging brands and customers like never before. Ready to redefine retail clienteling with a platform trusted by hundreds of omni-channel brands around the globe? Request your Endear demo today and enter a future of enriched connections and unparalleled customer loyalty. So, Sharon, tell us a little bit about um, how you got started and and why you think remote working is so important. Well, the, as I got started because I ran an outsourcing company about 20 years ago, a web hosting in an outsourcing company. And I have... And I was blown away by the amount of companies back then when you wanted to hire somebody, you would... Um, you need to use an outsourcing company, but you will kind of lose your company's soul, your processes, your culture, because to save money, you would work with a middle manager somewhere in the middle of nowhere, usually South Asia. And it didn't make sense. And I was surprised how many people were giving me that gig. And that did not, even if I was making money, I was not particularly happy to take that money because it just didn't make sense. It made sense for a real estate company, want the web design. Oh, that's perfect. But for a technology company to outsource to another, eh, it was weak. So when I sold the company, I decided, you know what? Let me focus on a company that is all about people. And this is, this is how we got started. We got started with going and searching across the world, finding the best strategies, how to win over amazing talent from the offshore world that want to work remotely. And 15 years later, this is where we are today We as the first remote recruitment agency. Your, your other aspect discussing about why remote is so important, oh, the list goes on. First of all, you are significantly more productive when you work remotely. Um, the stats show that in an office environment, an average person produces about two hours and 53 minutes in an eight hour shift. There's a lot of improvement on that. <laughs> this is, and one of the biggest reason why this happened is because distraction. The, the same research shows that every time that you, um, even tap on somebody's shoulder, want to hang out, want to talk about something, eh, cut, need to go for lunch, need to go home, being pulled into a meeting, which happens 10 times a day. Every time that it happens, you lose 20 minutes of productivity. Um, I find that in a remote environment, while yes, there's still kids and fridge and uh, certain distractions, you're in a lot more control of your working environment. So 
you can, if done correctly, remote work immediately creates a much more productive work environment. But also remote work is the ultimate equalizer. It lets people with special needs. It lets people, it lets the introverts of our world to win finally, to, to be the best that they can be. It lets us save uh, the environment by not driving anywhere. It lets us be better parents by uh, not not working in an office for 10, 12 hours a day and kicking somebody into your work, but but not having access to your kids. As a, as a stay-home daddy myself, I, 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 run a, I run a 60 employee company and I do need to pull those hours. But uh, as you notice, my kids run into the office every day, give me hugs, give me kisses. I go have dinner with them and then go back to work. There's just so much great things. They convert remote work. I don't think that a 20 minute conversation could, can bring, can show the joy of, of this experience. Yeah. And I think that you're in a right place now. The pre pandemic uh, idea of remote work was that uh, a lot of owners or bosses or employee or managers thought that it would be very unproductive to let you work at home, that you're going to spend your whole day just watching uh, novellas and, and, and soaps on TV and not actually getting any work done. But I think what's, as you, as you correctly said, that the studies have shown that people are actually a lot more productive and we have a lot more time in our day that we're not devoting to driving. I, I know that I also interviewed somebody who, who was from the Toronto area who ended up with a, you know, a 90 minute commute because of because of how many people have moved to the area and you have to get to the office and all that is negated through remote work um talk a little bit about how to keep employees motivated when they're working remote so this is the interesting thing so um a, a lot of my colleagues in the remote, a lot of the remote evangelists, which I don't deny I'm a little biased myself and quite the evangelist for remote work. But a lot of um, the remote uh, the remote people like to preach that there is no weaknesses uh, with remote work. It's all great. It's all rainbows and candies and all the good stuff. But there is one particular weakness that uh, comes with remote work, and that is the social experience. And and the. the don't get me wrong. I, I don't think that managers do such a great job in an office environment to pay attention to their employees, um, social, emotional, the mental health and everything that, that comes with it. But in remote work, it's, it's an absolute necessity because the, the idea of working on connection is so important because remote workers are by far the most disconnected people. And and in order to really get them to integrate and be part of the company and which all this all this social emotional stuff is not about kumbaya. It's actually to get them more productive. You need to be more intimate with your people. You need to actually know the name of their pets. You need to know about about their kids. You need to know about what's their favorite food and what's their hobby and get to know them on a personal level because this, this um, skill of, of getting intimate with pe and people is actually an answer to many of the questions that a lot of my clients ask me when they are a remote person. How do I know if they're productive? How do I know if they're motivated, if they have their energy, if they need the next bonus and raises? And my answer is talk to them. When you talk to them, even if you talk to them about non-business stuff, you will know if your employee is burnt out. You will know if your employee is disconnected. And of course, by having conversations, you will, you will create better connection and better culture. Um, when you take those step of being somebody, if you don't want to be friends, fine. I say friends is great also, but if just somebody's to, to know somebody on a personal level, you will get them to be more connected, happier, motivated, which automatically will reflect on their product, uh, productivity. And as 
I made the case that remote work in general is more is a more productive work environment as long as you don't mess it up. Yeah, I mean that's I, I think um, the, the the get to know your employees is a good thing whether they're in the office or outside of the office. I mean it's it's yes. always important, right? And I know that. Uh, my previous role, um, I just exited um, my last uh, company that uh, that we founded, and I actually did a 15-minute call with every single person every quarter, um, and it was time-consuming, but you're exactly right. You do get to know some of those details about them. Um, I actually took notes about their kids, and their I didn't get to know their pets as well, but uh, um, it pets. is important. Yeah, yeah I should know. Known. I I, I have an empl- I have an employee that that uh, she does not have kids, and our pets are so so su- such a the raison d'être right for her that when one of her cats died, she was so miserable, and it was important to to know that it was important to know how connected she was to her cat, and and she so appreciated when the entire team came. And treated it as if her child died, right? And, you know, it's very different for me. I don't have pets. I have two kids that behave like pets. But, I mean, uh, otherwise, they're they're still kids. And, and God forbid, something would happen to them. I don't know what I would do. So, for this lady, that mattered. And it created an incredible connection. Yeah, that's exactly right. So, talk a little bit about the maybe the shift in mindset that an employer has to make to learn how to to embrace remote work, but then to keep those workers engaged and recognize when there's a lot of, say there's a lot of turnover, how do you keep that engagement going and people happy? So I am actually a believer based, a little extension to what you said before. I am a believer that a great remote manager is a great manager in general. The only thing is that in an office environment, they were just able to get away with a lot more without anybody noticing, right? So the, the, the two hours and 53 minute statistic, maybe some offices don't have that and they're amazing. They're kicking some butt at, at and incredibly productive. But the point is shows that the world is not creating uh, productivity out of their out of their, they're not generating productivity out of their employees. So it, so all those advices that I offer for remote should be implemented in the office, <laughs> right? And, uh, but in an office environment, for example, you have, you, you, you can, you can easily implement a company, uh, implement strategies for company culture without really understanding company culture. I mean, it just kind of involves in an office and it's easy, but for for certain people, company culture is how big your party is and how big are, how fun are the activities and fun is great, but fun is not what defines company culture. Company culture, at least by my interpretation, I spent a long time actually trying to find a, um, a practical definition. And for me, company culture is defined by connection. When you create connections, when you create better uh, teamwork between people, when you connect better connection between the company and their employees, creating loyalty, the connection is what you're, how you evaluate how good your company culture is. Why is that important to mention? Because in remote, you don't ha- get to do all the cool, fun stuff. Yeah, you, well, if they're remote in the, in the same city, maybe you still do, but when you go international, it's much harder to implement uh, a good party. And yes, we all tried the Zoom party. They're not great. <laughs> They're really, really not. I, I remember sitting down and having and telling everybody, bring a drink and we hang out. And, and they loved it the first time. They loved it the second time. And the third time, my manager said, you're not creating that connection. So um, when you are focused on not being the coolest guy or the funnest boss and focus on pure connection, That is, then you'll be able to, it's not exactly measurable because there's no matrix for connection, but you get to analyze if what you're doing 
if you, what you're doing works. Um, for me, after trying the Zoom parties, I work functioned more on one-on-ones. We started implementing Donut um, as a tool on Slack that just gets random people to meet each other and get to get to know each other. That created a lot, lot more um, connection uh, for a lot more connection for out of my people. Eventually, that got boring. People start being fed up with being forced to have one on one. So we started creating hangouts. And and don't get me wrong, we also done some of the fun stuff. Where, but it, it was virtual board games, um, cards against humanities was really work well virtually. If you know the game, although I part of me saying I probably one day will get sued because of it because it's such an inappropriate game. But it, everybody loves, everybody has fun, and we're creating that great connection. Um, but but that's that the. That's what the managers have to think about when when they start working with a remote. They should do it in their office also. But here they they need to think about creating that connection and what's and they can create their own strategy around it and experiment. Um, the other aspect which um, we need to think about when we work with remote people and we want to get the most awesome productive people possible is focusing on distraction. Yes, the office environment is awful. Cubicle work is the worst. But at the same time, a lot of bosses, when they migrate to the remote environment, think that they can implement the same ideas, nudge people whenever they want, ask them to um, stop in the middle of meetings, uh, in middle of tasks, okay, sorry, not in middle of meetings, but middle of tasks. And you're, you're just killing productivity when you're just... I had this horrible habit and I write it in my book where I literally would wake up in the morning and I would just type to, to like 10 people. Hi, 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 hi. And I didn't mean anything bad for it. I just wanted to talk to my people, see what they're doing. But I would, but on their side, it's like, Oh my God, the boss. I, I don't even know what he wants. I don't understand. Why is he saying hi? And it was so incredibly distracting. Now here's the interesting thing. Um, if you go to a remote conference or talking to a remote evangelist, they talk about this concept called asynchronous work, which is it, it's it's if you go if you go to one of those conferences like right now a new co- a conference co- called Think Remote, um, they would sit, some of them would sit there and just say, "Oh, you got to make sure that your company is one hundred percent asynchronous," right, and that. In theory, makes sense. Hey, if you message a person in between tasks, in between, in between projects and, and really get this momentum where you only communicate with them on their terms whenever they're ready. In theory, it sounds great. Beside that you are forgetting the connection part. You're forgetting that you, you're thinking about productivity, but you're not thinking about longevity. And we are people and we need to continuously remember that there's certain things that just need meetings, that there's certain things that just need us to hang out, see each other face to face. Not everything can be done on Slack and on email or in a, in messaging format. You, you got to see people's face. You got to talk to them and you got to connect. If you think about it in, in, in terms of connection, if you think about it in not just productivity, but longevity, you will have the most self-sufficient, most productive people you have ever worked with in your life. Um, talk a little bit about creating that connection. I know from my personal experience, in the beginning, I expected people to just connect with me. But what I learned is that as a leader, I needed to make sure that I'm connecting with them And oftentimes they were afraid to connect to me and they didn't. So I would, you know, set a reminder and, and, and actually reach out proactively to set up those one-on-one meetings or just face-to-face meetings. Like you just said, Um, just talk briefly about the importance as a leader to be the, to be the leader in creating those connections. And what does that mean? It's not just about creating those connections. It's also by creating that trust Right. The trust is, the trust is really all about, um, getting, 
getting people to accept and to 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 feel confident that they can tell say anything and they can criticize and they can even call you crazy and you will take it really 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 well this is um the so it's it's an initiative that that requires a long time so yes you need to create this connection and yes you need to create this trust and that is an initiative that will only come from bottom down I, I, there's two types of management. There's the bossy management and there's the service provider management. The service provider is the person that says, I will provide, provide you anything that you need in order for you to be self sufficient and productive. Um, and the boss needs to be, um, and the bossy boss just tells you commands down. And I don't think that really works. Yeah. I, I hear you. Um, so, we have a few minutes left here. Um, what if you had some advice to give uh, an employer who is um, who's branching out into remote work or has to go into remote work? What would be the steps besides reading your book? What would be the, <laughs> what, what would be the steps so that they can get started? First of all, the key component. So if you're not reading my book, right? Um, First of all, start accepting. Come with the right attitude. If you co come into this remote work because you feel like you're obligated, you feel like you, COVID forced you into it, and now that's the way the world works, that's a bad attitude. Go back to the office, <laughs> right? <laughs> if I if I did not make the case, I mean, there's so much research that shows pre-COVID. COVID research was weak because there was a lot of a angry and upset people. But pre-COVID research from MIT Sloan showed that people are happier, more independent, more productive. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, again, the, there is multiple research uh, research on it. After reading this research, whether in my book or any anywhere else, you, uh, you come with the wrong attitude or change your attitude or just go back to the office. You know, the world, there's a lot of still jobs now that are back in the office. You don't need this. If you think that this is just a, a forced obligation, um, come in with the attitude. Focus on focus on not working. In my opinion, uh, with people who are not not committed, right? I all the freelancers and the consultants and the outsourced individuals. Um, I I've evolved. Uh, my company has evolved throughout through the years also. And I've seen that that people that working the people that working with um you on a full time basis want to integrate part of your company, want to be part of your career, those are those are the people that are gonna achieve the most. So this goes for both the people looking for a job or for people that are starting to hire people. You you want or you start your own company or you or or you go and be part of this amazing thing be focused because when in the side of your brain you continue, when your employee or you always thinking about the next gig about the next project you're not going to be able to have people that are fully integrated and fully part of this amazing thing you're trying to build or your boss is trying to build so I'm a big, big fan mentally to to deal with committed people, right? This is uh, I. Some people would say this is blast for me. They they love the freelance work. They love the consultant. They love the contractor. I like to work with people that are focused and invested. This is this is very important. If you are, if 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 you're looking for a job or you're looking to hire and you don't want to hire a company like distant job, you know, go post a proper job description. And again, when you interview these people, focus on committed investment, focus people and grow with them and create connection. And that's, that's how, that's how you get things started. 
That's awesome, Sharon. I know that in the green room we talked about how fast this would go, and we've already we've already we've already hit our time limit. I, I appreciate the, all your insights, and geez, I have so many more questions for you. We should follow up in a blog post. We'll put about we'll put out a blog post about some of these topics because I think they're so important, and I think that as we're shifting now towards post pandemic, and you know, bosses insisting that people come back, that there's there is definitely a place and will always be a place for remote work. Um, Sharon, as we, as we close I out the podcast, I gave everybody a chance to do a shameless plug. What would you like to plug today? Listen, at the end of the day, if you are looking to are the best and the smartest people all over the world and have, and have an incredible retention, yes, with us, you can have your cake and eat it too better people faster at a great value with with a, an amazing retention hit us up a distant job i think i think we're going to be able to impress you with, with some of the most talented it digital and even we're niching out to accountants at this moment we hit us up at you can message me directly at sharon at distantjob.com and i will gladly Impress <laughs> and showing you the caliber of people. Of course, there's no risk. There's no there's no fees until you see what we we can deliver, and you'll be you'll you'll be impressed with the level of customer service like you have never experienced with any other recruitment agencies. Otherwise, read my bestseller book, Surviving Remote Work, or listen to my audiobook, or come to Think Remote to learn some more. That's that's the shameless plug that I got. That's awesome, and I'll make sure that I put um, I'll put all those notes in our our show notes for for the podcast. Uh, and I'll just as a testament to to you and your dedication, your 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 kid came in behind you and <laughs> tapped you on the back. You had you <laughs> mid screen, you didn't even budge. You you've kept on your narrative. It's it's completely awesome. I thank you so much for being here today. It's a, it's an absolute pleasure. Thank you, Brent. Yep. Have a great one. Thank you for making it to the end of this episode of Talk Commerce. Please rate this episode wherever you download your podcasts. We are actively looking for people to participate in the free joke project. Go to talk-commerce.com and sign up for your free spot on the free joke project. If you are a business, I will do a 30-second elevator pitch in the spot to help promote your business. That's talk-commerce.com. <laughs>